Lisa Lenny from elenibernacki.com and today I'm talking with Ellen Nielsen who is currently in her third year of university in Australia and she's going to be sharing with you tips for how to revise effectively for your IB exams and her story of transitioning from the IB diploma to uni life. Ellen, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So would you like to tell, tell our audience a bit about your story and um, how you got to where you're at now in Australia? Yes, absolutely. I graduated in 2015 and I did back home in Sweden. And I always knew that I wanted to study abroad. Uh, and I did exactly know where and I had some family friends who suggested to go to Australia. So I went here to check it out and in 2016 I moved to university. So I'm currently in my third year and I'm studying a Bachelor of Arts, double majoring in both history and international relations. Tell us a bit about how you organised your revision timetable. So before the exams, I started studying about two months beforehand, and I made a schedule for myself where I studied every single day except Tuesday afternoons, and made a really strict schedule of exactly how I was going to plan out studying in order to maximise uh, my ability to pull the exams off. I started revising the first day of March. Um, that was, however, dependent on the fact that I made a schedule and I figured out exactly how many days um, I would need to put into learning all the things I needed to know. So it's more about figuring out, first you have to figure out what you need to learn, how you learn it the best, and then from there structure it up. And I would probably suggest going backwards. So you go, you sit, find the day when your exams start and then figure out how many days you need and how much time you need backwards from that in order to make the perfect study schedule for yourself because you want to give yourself a lot of time. Did you, for example, um, split up the pages uh, into different days of when you'd cover each page or did you split it up in terms of topics of what topics you'd cover for each day in your revision schedule? I split it up in topics. I took the subject outline uh, where it clearly states every single learning aspect you need to have from every single topic and I rewrote them into an individual bubble which will be visible in the mind map we've included in the description. In the First World War, for example, for my history subject, I split it up in years. So I started in 1914 and there I outlined the most important events and then put down different historians and different aspects. Thank you so much for sharing your um, your mind maps. When I saw them, I was like so excited. I was like, oh my goodness, the, the level of detail and focus um, that you can see, you know, how focused you were from how detailed and thorough your mind maps are. And I felt like I was so excited when you were happy to share these with, um, with people. So I'm going to include some links in the description box below you know, definitely make sure to check those out because something that's important as well to note is, you know, other than just the strategy of using a mind map for revision, it's how you use it and how much detail um, and connection you have between the mind map and the syllabus that also matters so that you're then preparing for the questions. And you will see that very clearly in these mind maps that Ellen has kindly of shared with us. So thanks for that, Ellen. No worries. And I also think that is very important that you continually refer to the syllabus in order to make sure that you do cover all the aspects what they're actually asking for you and that's what I did uh, with my mind maps. Awesome, lovely, lovely. And that's a really important reminder, yeah, to be revising through with a syllabus um, as, your, as your key and organizing tool and guide rather than just kind of going through textbooks randomly hoping for the best or answering questions without triangulating back to the syllabus. So, awesome. Thanks for reminding people that. That's super, super useful. Now, before we wrap up, there's one question that I'd like to ask. Um, what is it that, that you wish you knew or you wish someone had told you at the time? Uh, I think the best piece of advice we received a week before exams, and it was our teacher telling us that, remember to put as much effort you can into exams and do your very best, but also remember that at the end of it, you're so much more as a person than that grade you get. And I think that in the stress of preparing for exams, all your teachers will be on your back trying to tell you to do all the revision and stressing you out about the importance of exams. And they are important and you should do your very best. But at the same time, you shouldn't let that um, distract you from the fact that you need to focus on yourself as well 
and realise that you're so much more than just that great in the end. And Ellen, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap up? Um, I would like to point out how tough and challenging IV is and how personally for me it's probably been the toughest thing even though I'm in my third year of uni. So what I found after IV is that uni will never be as challenging. The workload is a lot easier at uni. You have less to do, you have exams, finishing up one subject and then you move on to the next one instead of doing them all simultaneously as you do an IV. And I also find that when you have all the skills that you learn and gain in IV, uni is a lot easier for you. A lot of my peers right now in third year of university still struggle um, and find some of the lecture contents difficult, whereas I can find that still in my third year, um, a lot of things I learn now is things I already knew from IB. IB is going to be tough, but it's definitely worth it. And the knowledge and skill sets you gain from it are definitely very valuable to you in university. And I'm grateful I did it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Ellen. Thank you so much for, for being here, for sharing your experiences, your tips, your advice. And uh, for those of you watching, if you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this. Take care, until the next time.